Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm dying of starvation. I haven't had a oh, no. Goose Buds episode in so long. Oh. Oh no, our friend Chad's dying. Oh God. Oh my bones. Oh, I need a Goose Buds episode to sustain myself, but it's been so long without a regular episode. Excuse me, excuse me, gentlemen. What's going on here? I'm. My, a our, my friend's dying. He he needs mm-hmm. the show. Oh, he looks like he's dying from bones. Yes, his bones are falling out of his body, I think. I need goose buds. Oh, this man needs 50 cc's of good goose buds. 50 cc's equals 50 episodes of goose buds. (laughs) Please put it in me. Put it right in my bones. All right, inject him. All right, well, I I think we're going to need... We're going to need some help to make all these episodes, though. I think that's what... What what has to be done? Tell me. I'm a doctor. (laughs) doctor people have to go to this website patreon.com slash goosebuds and mm-hmm. support us so they can pay your extreme medical bills your price gouging medical bills to yes. put the bones back into our friend chad's body please help me. i got into doctorism for the money <laughs> <laughs> and and this is a i you know when your friend i care about him obviously because he's my patient but you know it gets me really excited to see someone in so much bone pain um, but uh, if people if if people want to help this gentleman, uh, I prescribe you, the listener, uh, fifty cc's of Patreon donations. <laughs> that that would be so good. How much would that must cost? A lot of money, though, right? Yeah. How much is fifty cc's of Patreon donation? Well, um, it, the conversion rates are a little difficult to do in my head right now. But if you join. Uh, the Patreon, you can join at any amount. It, for a dollar, I think I read that uh, <laughs> you can vote on what books are read next on Goosebuds. This po- I guess it's a podcast. I don't really know. I'm just a doctor. Wow. Um, but uh, <laughs> This is very but, complex. Uh, You're right. But if you, if you donate $5 or more, you have your name read in the credits of the shows, and you get, I think, I think something called Camp Goosebuds, which uh, I don't think has been FDA approved. Yes, that'll be more episodes for Chad. That your his bones will go oh back in his body. Oh my god, my arm just fell off. Please help her. Oh no, someone we gotta get that. We gotta get these episodes made. Either donate to the Patreon or pray. It's your choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's Patreon.com/slash Goosebuds. Help our friend. I'll prepare the needle. <laughs> I will prepare the bone needle. Invented a way to fix hiccups. Like, <laughs> okay, let's hear it. Let's to hear it. fix them. Wait, hiccups that are corrupted. <laughs> fix the corrupted hiccups, or or cure hiccups. Or I, do you want I, to cure I've hiccups? converted hiccups into good hiccups that give you mini orgasms every time you hiccup. No, no. I, Hold up. That's scary. Whoa, I've, I no. I've that's inv- marketable. That's marketable. This is also marketable. <laughs> I shouldn't start my new method with uh, fake fake information. I I think I have figured out a technique on how to stop. <laughs> Hiccups, and I've been wondering how to patent it. Dom talking about his Moschini method. I, I say it on this podcast. It's patent. Yeah, I think I'm willing to share it with our listeners. <laughs> uh, so here's here's the thing: when you have the hiccups, uh-huh. right? I want you t- to build up like tension and energy in your chest, like kind of like tense your muscles. Okay. As if you are storing up energy, like a Dragon Ball character. Okay. This is gonna sound silly. This is gonna sound silly. And then extend out your arm like you're going to fire a laser blast okay. and mentally move the tension and like the pressure in your chest, like the energy down your arm, out your hand slowly. Uh huh. It's worked like 10 out of 10 times. Are you following the hiccup during this? Yeah. The hiccup, the hiccup kind of stops. Like the hiccup just kind of like, <laughs> if you don't do it mid hiccup, right? Like in one of the down, the, 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 the lower parts of the peak, you hiccup. Sure. Then you go, okay, and you build your tension, and you just kind of, like, pretend to be firing that pressure out your hand. If you do it slow and you concentrate, 
It has worked for me and the girlfriend over and over. It is kind of a miracle cure. I don't know what to do with that information yet. <laughs> I, I I have to ask. It sounds it sounds like this works. But, you know, it does work uh, based based on. Ba- Oh, it does work. Did you just have the hiccups? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to do this podcast. I just did his technique. It works. Paul, self-induced hiccups. That's th- yeah, that, I, I want to learn how to give myself hiccups. Well, I did the opposite of what Chad says, and it started the hiccups, <laughs> and then I did it again to stop them. Yes, sure. You, act, you can start a hiccup by pulling energy in through your yes. hand like a siphon. Yes. Mm-hmm. I believe it. I mean, I believe that this works. I want to know why you're getting hiccups so often though because it sounds like this is tried and true it's worked for you and the girlfriend i'm eating food too fast dom i mean are you eating bubbles (laughs) yeah Yeah, i have that same that same issue where it's like you're just wolfing it down you're inhaling it you're not even really stopping to like breathe because you're like this is this is the best chinese i've ever had i'm never gonna eat again (laughs) definitely (laughs) are hiccups like your body being like like a, it's like a speed bump for eating. Is that really what it is? I, I don't know. Scientists still don't know what they are. Isn't that kind of scary? Like that medical doctors don't know. Well, I don't want to scare you more, Chad. But uh, your technique, <laughs> your technique, kind of sounds like you may be shooting a part of your soul out of your body. Shit, I hadn't thought about that. Oh. You're losing life every time you stop your own hiccup. Yeah, you better be careful. Like five years off your life, bro. Yeah, it's like holding in a sneeze, how it takes off like <laughs> two hours of your Or life. not holding your breath when you pass a graveyard. Like, you're, that, you're screwed. Yes. Oh, my God. Elspeth, you are yes. bringing the urban legends to this podcast that I love and I need. <laughs> I'm so happy you're here. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, by the way, welcome, Elspeth, uh, uh, hey. guest to our podcast. If you haven't uh, recognized her voice yet, uh, how could you not? A, a famous voice actress in our midst. Uh-huh. Friend of Link. Fra- Hi. Yes, dude. It's crazy. I know. I I was I was really I was freaking out about it to to be I'm, honest. And when you're when I mean, have you I I assume you you've seen the footage. You've played the game. It's weird. You're you're there with Link? Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. I, I mean, that's so insane. crazy. It is insane. The first time I played it, I was it was kind of like where you know you're you don't really believe it. You're like, "Oh, yeah, well, maybe it's not really me. Maybe you like got somebody else. Maybe like, ah, we'll just we'll tell you you're in it, but it's not really you. And then I I, I heard my voice in the game, and man, it was it was surreal because I've been such a huge Legend of Zelda fan for forever. Yeah, and and this the, like hearing that like juxtaposed to like the other characters, and and like this is a this is actually like a fucking Legend of Zelda games. It was it was pretty baller, dude. And so I had to like kind of. Res- like refrain from like okay don't cry don't cry it's fine bro it's fine <laughs> but yeah it was it was really cool in case people don't know uh they should immediately go check out uh tell me if i got the title wrong because i didn't uh, it's the the hero of rhyme right so close shit that's a rap album so close it's called cadence of hyrule cadence of hyrule hero of rhymes a rap yeah. album i used to listen to sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> cadence of hyrule. are you talking about are you talking about the ocarina of rhyme yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, that's, 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 Arena that's a Rhyme. fantastic album, by the way. It's like not official, right? But it's so good. But yeah, that's what, that's what I used oh, to do. Oh, man. Uh, and Elspeth, what else do you do? Yes. Just so other people well, know. Uh, let's, let, what, is the, what is the official title of the game? Oh, the, the official title is called Cadence of Hyrule. That's that's the most recent one that I've done. And it's a, a mashup of Crypt of the Necrodancer, which is an indie title that came out in 2013. It's a rhythm Very cool. uh, dungeon crawler game. Yeah. And then they uh, made it into to the uh legend of zelda universe so it's it's like a it's kind of a crossover which is pretty cool title. like regardless really that nintendo's even like not trusting an indie dev but like giving a bit one of their biggest licenses to yeah. a relatively small developer and letting them make this mm-hmm. really cool offshoot thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah man i mean when i first when i first got the news um, you know, it was, they were really teasing it. Like, well, we have something really cool, but we're not sure if it's going to pan out. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess, you know, I'll just yeah, hold on to, hold on to hope, but I'm not, I'm probably going to forget about it in a couple of months. And then they were like, well, we'd really like you to record for this part. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> it's happening. That's so, sad. I, yeah. I, Beautiful. I, I, as a, as a Zelda fan yeah. during the recording session, did you ever, did you ever just like throw in some like, you know. Some loose lines. You were just like, maybe they'll use this and be like, "Hey, Link, I really like your hat." <laughs> <laughs> did you just like throw in some compliments like, to be during like during the recording session? I'm just like, Link, listen, I'm a huge fan, and I just wanted to tell you. 
I, I dream about you, bro. <laughs> that's, that, for some reason, that's in the game. It got, it got better. it's in the source files. That stuff is there. You have to go find it. Yeah, they the, no, actually, there there really wasn't much ad libbing. Um, Nintendo. I mean, th- I I didn't during the session. It was very like here are the lines. We just need you to record these parts. Here's how you need to sound. Uh, it was pretty straightforward. Um. So it really wasn't, uh, it was fun for sure, but it wasn't like, okay, you can just ad lib this. For um, sure, yeah. Yeah. So, but, but man, what what an experience. I recorded all that in my closet and it felt great. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> is, that, is that where these voices in video games come from? Closet? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Find, you find a little hidden box in a shelf somewhere and you go, oh, look at all these unused voices. And then you just kind of. <laughs> But you got to watch out in Chad's house because he'll find a bunch of hiccups inside of them as well. That'll just pop out (laughs) and just sneak into it because he shot him out of his hand. Thank God. I need to try out my several theories of hiccups. When I found a way to patent and make money off of this technique, I I, listen, I'll buy us all houses. Okay. Chad, Chad, I love your technique. I'm not making fun of it. Like Short Kings, I'm not making fun of it. I think it's great. (laughs) It's about the enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Also, I mean, Dom, not to not to put you on the spot. I feel like. At some point, either on the podcast or after, you and Elspeth need to talk because, Elspeth, you haven't heard our, our most recent episodes of Goosebuds. I'm sure you listen to every episode. Dom's been campaigning <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, to be the new voice of Mario. <gasps> mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you know, this is because uh, uh, Mr. Mario right now, I can never remember his last name. Charles uh, but he, Yeah, but he's, you know... I'm, you know, my dad's from Italy. In fact, my dad is visiting <laughs> Los Angeles right now. He he's in he's in town. We're gonna go to Huntington Garden today. It's gonna be beautiful. Great. But you know, uh, you know, Charles is he doesn't have <laughs> Italian background. You know, I do. Dom is very upset that a that a French man, a French and Spanish man, is being nothing, an Italian. Nothing against the French. <laughs> But hey, hey man, listen. I, all right, now wait a second. I have to pause right here because I just did my twenty three and me. I found out I'm nineteen point five percent French. Whoa. That is the majority of my ancestry. Wow, I I was Italian. I thought I was Italian, Dom. So are you sure? Are you sure oh. you're not French, bro? I took the twenty three and me. Okay, I'm forty percent <laughs> Italian. <laughs> I think it might be more than that, <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, you know, that 40% is real riled up right now <laughs> because Charles is walking around going mama mia and stuff like that. And it's offensive, you know, it's like, well, we don't say that all the time. And in fact, when's the last time Mario talked about pasta? Cause that's something we do on the regular. <laughs> Yeah, wow. So, you know, I, right now I am working on my Mario. Right now it goes a little bit like this. Yo, <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. It's good, I right? See yeah, it. you can see you can see it. Yeah, <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> okay, so would you keep would you keep the overall plumber look or would you go for a completely like revamp 2019? <laughs> I, like that I, get to, I like that I get to redesign Mario. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, if you're, listen, if you're going to be the voice, you have to like go the whole way, right? Like wh- yeah. what would he, what's his <laughs> shtick now? Like, is he still a plumber or has he changed profession? Yeah. What's Mario's new job? To tell you the truth, I come from a family of plumbers. Okay. Okay. He's going to be a plumber. Ch- right. uh, Dom, Dom oh, you, if you're not changing the plumber thing, what's Mario's new favorite vegetable or fungi? Oh, if he, you know, I haven't gotten that. I can't, I, I mean, I can't. <laughs> we, uh, let, uh, you know what? Let me say this. Nintendo, give me a call. Then we can talk about these details. Okay. All right. Elspeth, you're in now. So we got you got hey. the job already, pretty much. All right. Yeah, if you see Charles, by the way, just <laughs> push him for me. Just push him down for me. <laughs> <laughs> this entire episode, by the way, Elspeth, has just been an entire con just to talk to you about getting Dom an audition. Not at all about covering this Goosebumps book that we all read. <laughs> this wonderful that, Goosebumps what, book. What is this book called? I was about to Listen. say that I was like, I don't think I know the title. The Headless Ghost? We've got, there are measures that need to be taken. I understand. Dom, I can do that for you, buddy. Yeah. I'll reach out. Whoa. Reach out directly to to uh, the kings themselves, the short kings themselves. <laughs> short now. kings at, at Mario Land. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, I think this book is the Headless Ghost question mark, Dom. I think that is the title of this book. <laughs> question mark? The Headless Ghost? Sure. I mean, who cares, I just, right? I love the, 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 the picture on the front says major headache. 
Oh, Wait, I didn't, I didn't, didn't that. even That's good. My I... eyes went straight to watch Goosebumps on Fox Kids. I remember watching Goosebumps. I remember. That was, man. I'm sure you guys have already, you know, oh, yeah. wax poetic about the show, but that was, who I, I never missed an episode. I was dedicated. It was scary. It was a scary yes. show. Freaked me out, dude. Canadian TV acting at its prime. Oh, yeah. It was the heyday for Canadian production. Were they sure. Canadian? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can tell because whatever equipment they use in Canada, shooting at night is so dark. You can't see anything in the show. Yeah, and there's just like moose hairs all over the lens. You can always Yeah, tell. that makes yeah. sense. They're always like wearing coats because it's so cold. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, yeah, totally. Like you can see their breath in every shot. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. The craft services table always has the pancakes and the syrup laid out. <laughs> yeah, they always pan over to the craft services <laughs> table for some reason. <laughs> so, Elspeth, Elspeth, I want to ask, uh, if I may, just like you said, uh-huh. you, you watched the show. Uh, did you read the books as well? Yes. Uh, yes. And you were a fan. Uh, yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I was probably I was a super fan, super fan to the point where I wrote R.L. Stein like no. letters. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, I I was very into it. I think I got a reply once, um, and he was he was you know it was very like generic, right? It was like, oh, mm-hmm. thanks so much for writing about. It was like some choose your own adventure thing, and I can't remember the the book, but I remember I was just so enthralled by it. Like this was this is such a cool idea, Mister Stein. Thank you for <laughs> for making this so. It's, I, I don't think I used the word interactive, but it was it was something like this. This was so fun, and I I hope you make more of these because I remember when he first started doing them, it was like you, you had like all the pages dog eared or whatever, like you know, to sure mm-hmm. to where you'd like know the the outcome of the of the choose your own adventure book, but yep. man. Those those were the days. Those dude. blew I was my mind too. When, goosebumps. when I was younger and 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 reading a lot of Goosebumps, and the first Choose Your Own Adventures came out, and I was just like, "Oh, I can be in it. I can do it." Yeah, that was mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta say, I like that you found the uh, the cover pun amusing. We're so uh, numb to these books <laughs> that I didn't even look at it. I didn't even look at the cover pun. Yeah, we've been hitting the goosebumps for 65 episodes officially. Yeah. <laughs> so that now it's just like, just give it to me. Just give me the story. <laughs> just put it right in my vein. I can't find an opening, but I, I guess just inject it in my foot, whatever, you know? So obviously when you were reading Goosebumps, Elspeth, when you mm-hmm. were reading them as a kid, huge fan. Uh-huh. As an adult, have you ever returned to a book to pick it up and uh, give it a read? I have. Um, oh. Just recently, uh, I saw Chicken Chicken, and that was that, that. I don't know if you guys covered that one, but that was no, we have not. That was one of my favorites. Um, it is about I. Well, I don't want to spoil it, but but the cover has uh, it's it's kind of terrifying. Yeah. It's a girl. It's a chicken, uh, but with a girl's head. And oh geez, I'm looking at this now. What the hell is yeah, that? Yeah, man, it's. I think it was like the se- second b- book. No, no, fi- the fifty third. It's the fifty third book. I'm getting it mixed up with another one. Yeah, but this one was. It was freaky, and I remember reading it. I'm like, whoa, this is. This deals with like witchcraft. It's it's, it's you know you you read it and you're like, oh, okay, so this is just you know, it's it's classic R.L. Stein where every chapter is like, and then. You heard the ghost, but it wasn't actually a ghost. It was just the dog howling or something. You know, it's but the book itself uh, as a kid freaked me out. Well, I love this one. A good pun on the front on the front of it. It's a finger licking nightmare, Uh which uh, Uh which this was the height of everyone loving chicken. This is the height of KFC's power. The colonel had never been stronger than in this. No, no, not in 1997. Finger licking good is actually trademarked. So you can't. Mm -hmm can't use that they were close they were close Mm -hmm. to it though they skirted that line Mm -hmm. because that's the type of rebellious person that rl stein is so you revisited chicken chicken you liked it yep yep i did i also um it was i can't i think i was on a a flight somewhere and i'm just like i I should get some goosebumps (laughs) and (laughs) and, uh i also really like monster blood i remember that oh yeah it wasn't really scary it was just like this is so cool oh my god i wish this would happen to me like that you know, I don't know. I thought it was no. Dope. As as we've kind of realized as we go through these books, they're not necessarily scary as much as just like, what if a terrible thing happened to a child? 
Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that was yeah. it. And, and we just kind of watch from a uh, third person perspective as a child goes mm-hmm. through pain. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. A, a terrible thing. A terrible thing happened to a child in the headless ghost. It very uh, multiple children. Ha- terrible uh, things happened. I would say something terrible happened to one child. <laughs> he was a bad child. Maybe he deserved it. But we'll get to that. Why don't we talk about the book? Yeah, let's talk about the let's talk about this book. Yeah. Let's get in there. This one stinks. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good one. I have to say this one isn't as bad as some of the bad ones. Yeah. Elspeth, what did you think as someone who doesn't read a ton of Goosebumps <laughs> books right now? <laughs> so um, if I remember correctly, this was also an episode um, yes. mm-hmm. on the show. And I think now I don't remember if I was eating strawberry ice cream or if they put strawberry <laughs> ice cream into like into the dumb waiter for this episode. And then okay. like, the, you know, the, the part where like the kid crawls yeah. in or whatever. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they like put something in the dumb waiter. And that's that's how I remember. I'm like, oh, I remember this this episode being specifically. You have a great memory. I mean, I was I was into it, dude. You okay. remember stuff you're into, right? Do you, yeah. is, is, is strawberry ice cream a favorite of yours? It's it's not, which okay. is why I, I I think I must have been eating it, or I associate strawberry ice cream with this book. I'm just like I think it, something was with the dumb waiter. Yeah, it might have ruined strawberry ice cream for you. <laughs> it is. Oh my god, they did put strawberry ice cream in there. Did they? Yes, you're amazing. How did you do that? Oh my that? god, holy shit! I was like, I've got to be crazy because I'm like, I remember something about ice cream. <laughs> Dude, they, it was strawberry ice cream that they put on there. Wow. Son of a gun. It's Seth's favorite ice cream, the the bad boy Seth, Seth from the book. Seth, yeah, dude. Mm, Seth. Seth. What a turn. Right, why, why, don't we, yeah, why don't we set up the, a bit of the uh, picture? Because I, I agree that this is a bad book. This one stinks. Mm-hmm. I had higher hopes reading this for the first part because, uh, and, and Elspeth, like, I, I know you only have, it's either this or chicken chicken is probably your most be- recent memory, though it seems like you have a really great memory for all of these. <laughs> a lot of the problems we deal with is that, like, these books just have nothing happened for, like, at least two thirds of the book, right? So, right. It's, right. Books, the, the spooks don't start for a while. The spooks don't start. Either. And so I was really optimistic that this book started with, with spooks, with, mm-hmm. like, we want to scare each other, our, our neighborhood kids, we like to go in. Uh, it Dwayne and what was her, her the girl Stephanie. Stephanie, uh, like we like to go around town as the terror twins and 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 prank all of our friends. And here's the thing about the kids in these books. And I, Elspeth, I don't know if you remember this, but this is something that we discuss a lot. There's two kinds of Goosebumps kids: little shit and chicken shit. <laughs> yes. Okay? Oh my god, that's so accurate. <laughs> Either you're a little shit or you're a chicken shit. These kids, little shit. Yep. Well, I mean, Dwayne though, Dwayne's a chicken shit, right? Like he eventually well, becomes right. like a little shit, but he definitely he. I I totally agree. It's like every single book, there's the type A kid, there's a type B kid, and the the mm-hmm. type type A kids like. Are you are you gonna do this with me? You're probably gonna be too scared to do this. Bah, 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 bah. And the type B kid, mm-hmm. like, <laughs> I'm not scared secretly while he's shivering. You Fishing know, it's pants. like that's totally that that's how that's how he crafted all of his books, dude. But you're right. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Dwayne is a secret chicken. Shit yeah, deep down for sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest too. I'm just gonna throw this out there. I I don't normally root for this in stories. I think it's very like contrived to go. But I was kind of hoping for Dwayne and Stephanie to get together at the end to fall in love. They 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 talk about how they're like getting bored of these pranks. Uh huh. They're like, yeah, and like we need something new and exciting. It's like, why don't you two just realize you should be together? Why don't y'all just <laughs> bang it out? Bang it out, or if you guys are underage, just hold hands. Like either one, whatever you need to do. Just, just get get it out of your system, Chad. Chad I would have loved if this took like a like a I don't know like holding Caulfield exploring your sexuality. Yeah, uh, they're going into a house alone at night. They could find a a bedroom and. I mean, they love to scare. They love to live on thrill. You know. I mean, that's true. It's a little. Uh, it's a little weird. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that's. Uh, I actually can't recall. Um. I can recall like kids having crushes in the Goosebumps series, but I don't know if they ever like got together. You know, I don't I, unless that was the theme of the book where it was like my yeah. girlfriend or something like that. They never actually got together. So I really I really respect R.L. Stein for doing that, where it was like he kept the theme 
campy. It was very like this is a this is a ghost story. This is not about like how these two characters suddenly find their love for each other. Like to the to the very uh-huh. end, it's about it's about the monsters in the books. It's about like the kids getting scared. It's never That's about like fair. time to time to kiss my girlfriend now that we went through the haunted house. So it's like this is <laughs> It, it, I don't know. I, I respect you're, that. You're I right. respect that about you're, the books. He saved it for Fear Street. He did save <laughs> Fear it for Street's Fear when Street. it's just dicks out all the time. Really? I don't That's remember kissing. that no, one. No, no we're totally making the, that up. Those uh, were the kissing books where kids actually died. Oh. You know, you're right. Everyone oh. used you know, yeah. you know he wrote a book that was a, a, a promo for a roller coaster? It was like a sca- it was like a scary book about a scary roller coaster. Wait, The, the Beast? Beast? I know I love The Beast, dude. The Beast is from yeah. um uh, Is that a Fear Street? No, it's 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 an original book for this ride. <laughs> it's a real yeah. roller coaster. The Beast is the best roller coaster in America. Yeah. Have you guys been on it before? It's so good. I'm looking it up. Okay, cool. That's neat. That's uh So so the this 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 book's about these kids, Stephanie and Dwayne, they like to scare people by throwing spiders on them as they sleep mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And one day uh they say, uh uh, you know, uh this this kind of doesn't do it for me anymore. You know, I kind of need something more. I don't want to stop you. I want to, I want to let you keep going, but I do want to point something out. There's just just a moment that, of Dwayne's storytelling that I I realized that his specialty does, does not lie in storytelling. <laughs> very first chapter, <laughs> very first chapter. Dwayne's like, we love to scare people. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a long story of how we got here. Next chapter, a year ago, we decided to start scaring kids. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, it. Well, the long story, I guess, is all the details of all the scaring that they do do. Yes. But that is a short story. It was a very short story. Well, also, as I point out, like, in terms of, I think it's cool that these kids are being proactive and trying to scare folks as opposed to just, like, I don't know, knocking over mailboxes. But to be fair, what they describe is mostly breaking and entering. Like, <laughs> they do a lot of like, is, is that not the scariest home invasion? It is. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know if what they're doing is like, they're masters of their craft as much as just, yeah, no, anyone's going to be startled away. <laughs> like, one of their scares is, we put chicken bones inside someone's mailbox. That's going to freak them out. I'm like, I would be pissed off, be like, what the, f- I just touched greasy old bones. Well, I mean, the, he used, you know, the the phrase was, we put bones in their mailbox because it's creepy to touch bones. Like, that was, that <laughs> I mean- was the sentence. It's like, oh, I guess it's, cr- I guess. But I I would be more like, eh, dude, who... What do I, I'm gonna get like some disease from this? This is gross. That's that's very scary. <laughs> it's sad for people who like during football season, people love to eat wings, but they're so scared when they're doing. <laughs> yeah. What if, also, but what if they're a vegan? You might kill them. They might touch it and just like their hand's not used to the grease and then. Well, that's why we have the football. It's to distract us from the from uh, the death and the bones. Yeah, we that watch we're people die on Th- television this, while we're eating. <laughs> this also weirdly reminded me. I just want to point out too that one other thing that beginning that really caught my is that they talk about that they love. Making fun costumes. These kids love Halloween. Okay, I'm a little yes. bit emboldened, but one of the descriptions of the costume, I believe, is that Stephanie last year was iceberg lettuce. <laughs> yeah, she goes as lettuce. And, <laughs> yeah, that's and, not scary. And Dwayne goes, that was pretty great. I'll have to try to top that. Like, he loved the lettuce. <laughs> I mean, I like it, but it's not scary. <laughs> I guess unless kids, oh, yeah. all kids in the neighborhood hate Ooh. vegetables. Particularly iceberg lettuce, the least nutrient lettuce. Yeah, that's the scary part is that you're gonna I eat, mean, you have to eat so much of it and it doesn't do any <laughs> healthy things for you. I mean, he says, he says the year before she came waddling out inside a huge ball of green toilet paper. And then the next thing he says is, you guessed it. She was iceberg lettuce. I'm like, I would not, I would not have guessed that. I would never guess. From, from your description, I would not have guessed iceberg lettuce. I would have said fat Grinch. That's what I would have <laughs> Fat Grinch. What's that Pokemon that's just eyes and shoes and it's tangly? Tangle? Oh, Tangela. Tangela. A Tangela. 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 Yeah. Tangela. Yeah. You know, you know what's a scary costume? It's just a giant peanut. Because like people with peanut allergies, they, could, they will die. You are the Grim Reaper. <laughs> a peanut in a hood. No, not a not a not an anthropomorphic peanut, just a peanut. <laughs> yeah, or Mr. Peanut, maybe. I don't know. He's a goddamn killer. Though. I think his upper class <laughs> status makes him more terrifying because he could probably get away with the murder. Yeah, no, you know he's he's definitely upper class. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, of course, and he got there by shelling out his relatives <laughs> to be <laughs> eaten. <laughs> Mr. Peanut's a terrorist. <laughs> He's a war profiteer. 
Think about that. Think about that man spreads poison to people that are allergic to peanuts all over the world, and he gets rich off of it. He's a terrorist, and he's smiling with his monocle, the sweet son of a bitch. Yeah, he's always smiling too. So you know he's happy about it. He's very happy with what he's done. Hell, Smith, it's fucked up. Uh, so, so Dwayne and Stephanie, they, uh, they, the, the regular scares just don't do it anymore. They need something harder, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. And they say, "Let's go to Hill House, yeah, which is a famous home, yeah. Yeah. that was built by a a captain. And once it was finished, he was building it for his, him and his wife. And once it was finished, he was called out to sea." So he said, see you later, wife. And he got on his boat and he oh, never boy. came back. Uh, also, nice let's just call out that they're like, not that you they own it, but like they're just stealing the actual Hill House. Like that's a real, uh-huh, uh-huh. that's a real place that has been the inspiration for like what, like 20 movies, that this Netflix book, series. Everything. This book is the king of cliche. There's so many good cliches mm-hmm. in this book. It's insane. I'm surprised. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm reading it like, Hill House, like the the Hill House, like was yeah. that? Is that how this? No, from the this from can't the board be. game. <laughs> <laughs> what board game? Are you talking about Thirteen Dead End Drive, or is there a Hill House? No, board uh, the the what? Isn't there a Hill House uh, board game? There probably like, is. Done it? The Haunting of the House on the Hill. Paul is actually thinking of the board game Betrayal at House on the Hill. Yes, oh there you go. yes, Still thank a hill you. House. That's a Hill House. That is a Hill House. It is. Yes. I, I guess it's just a, a stereotypical name, but it, it 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 felt kind of like I don't know if you want to use that name just because they say like oh it's called Hill House because it was on a hill. Also, it's on Hill Street. Pick it's, one. Look, Shirley Jackson, a uh, 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 a like a pillar of horror writing, wrote The Haunting of Hill House a long time ago. You don't use the name. That's yeah. all. That's all you got. Mm-hmm. You just don't do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, so. Th- th- the captain, I guess, later haunted the Hill House, where she went mad. The wife went mad. She disappeared, which is kind That's of a strange, like, misdirect of, right? It's like, she he never sh- sh- came back. He built this house. And it's then, a little like, of A, a little of B. Yeah, actually. and then, like, the day he finished it, he died. Mm-hmm. No, he went to sea and never came oh, back. He never came mm-hmm. back, so then she got so sad, and then she disappeared. Right. There's, there's, there's no dead bodies. Mm-hmm. And then a new family moved in. The Craw family. Yes. The Craw family. They yes. had a sh- they had a shitty kid. They had mm-hmm. a shitty little kid. Mm-hmm. Wait, is it the Craw family? Because mm-hmm. yeah, okay, yeah. Andrew so Craw shit- mm-hmm. is the son. Yeah, Andrew Craw, and uh, he was mean. He was always playing pranks. And He's then, a little shit. Yep. And then the sea ghost, the man <laughs> who went out to sea, he came back as a ghost, and he grabbed the tra- the Andrew by his head and tore his head off. Yeah, cool. I, I I don't know why. This is like my biggest question <laughs> with the whole. They they say that he sh- the, the ghost would show up even before I think the cross move in. I swear they say like a hundred years later the cross move in because it's just a nice big round number, right? And that like you would hear that the ghost would show up going Annabelle, Annabelle, because he's advertising the movie, but mm-hmm. he's looking for his he's looking for his wife. Nothing. So like why? Uh, yes, the kid, craw kid who moves in is a shit, and he like throws a cat and is sad the cat didn't die. It's a weird detail. <laughs> it's very, uh, very, very, very scary that he. But also, yeah, anyone who's that mean way. to cats should also totally die. Uh, like, why, why take his head? Because he's a brat, you know. And R.L. Stein loves punishing children. Wow, sure. I never thought about the fact that he's just punishing kids. Yeah. Yeah, straight up. Like so, in this book, you know, the the bad kid or whatever, the 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 kid who has no redeeming qualities whatsoever, gets no. his head torn off. So that's like a yay. If you if you're not good, Santa's gonna put you on the naughty list. So if you're not good, uh, a dead husbando is gonna come back and rip your head off, <laughs> choke your head off. Right. So I feel like that was Arl Stein's way of of like. I don't know, somehow like teaching these kids some morals who were whoever was reading the book at the time would probably be like, whoa, man, if I'm a dick, there goes my head. Someone might just rip my head right off. It might just come right off my body. Mm -hmm. Maybe R.L. Stein Jr. was a real piece of work. And at at the end of the day, when he finally got to his writing, he would be like, if I was a ghost, I would rip my son's head off. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God for these books, by the way, because there would have been a lot of dead kids. If there would have been a lot of dead kids. <laughs> All of this is backstory just for the house. Mm-hmm. 
Which I thought was cool that he put like an he like took his normal scary story and he put like a normal scary story inside of it. He put a lineage. Yes. Of sure. Scary I, I you know occurrences. In the writer's room, we would probably call this a phrase I usually hate called a hat on a hat. Mm. Where it's like, you had one good ghost story. <laughs> I was invested by the captain, you know, and who came back. And now there's two potential ghosts, both in the captain and Annabella's wife. Mm-hmm. Right. And and choked off head kid. And but now there's a choked uh, choked <laughs> off head kid. I don't think it was choked by the way. I think he literally just like pulled it off. Like the like the top of a uh, like a grape off the stem, like it just kind of like plucked it off. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he had ghost strength. He just yeah. went for a choke slam in the whole head. Yeah, it was yeah. a clean pop. So yeah, he takes pop. the head off, and because the head is never found, and the boy died, now the boy is the ghost. Recipe for a ghost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great point because the dad never actually comes back, does he? No, the captain and the, and the wife never show up. Yeah. Yeah. Well. No. Oh, that's right. Okay. I'm not, I don't want to get to the ending too soon. You're right. They don't show. Now, uh, something else scary did happen because we have this house. It's abandoned, or rather, it, th- there are tours. They do ghost tours of the mm-hmm. home, and that's why Dwayne and Stephanie are so familiar with it. They love the ho- house. They've taken the tour a hundred times. Yep. There is a detail in the tour later on. Uh, Otto is the tour guide, mm-hmm. and he says that. Uh, one of the craws, with the, I think the father, uh, suddenly got caught on fire from the mm-hmm. fireplace. Yeah. And he yeah. burned to death. Yeah. Not, not just burned to death, that he was found clutching the fireplace. Yeah. Like his hands were just on the mantle. Yeah, there was there was just a pair of skeleton uh-huh. hands on the mantle. Did you guys picture it else. like I did where because he said it just said like he just stood there, it was like. I, for some reason, I pictured the dad was on fire, and then like a very much old dad was like, "Fine, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna take it." And, <laughs> and he just kind of like leaned against the fireplace, like he was getting a, a proctologist exam, just like, "Ah, ah, fire, <laughs> fine. Ah, I'm not gonna say anything because I don't complain." You're right. Classic boomer dad move. Classic. <laughs> I feel no pain. I'm not lost to this fire. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he dies of an unrelated fire. The mom also died? Haunted. It was pro- probably a haunted fire. Oh, you think so? Yeah, probably lit on fire by a ghost captain, maybe? I don't know. I don't think the mother... I don't think we are given details about the mom, are we? Yeah, that's a good no. point. So it's just like... It's just the mom, the dad, and, and Andrew. Um, Wait, they, the mom... I think the and mom... And this is what I'm saying. Ghosts only ever kill men, and this is why men need more rights. We don't have enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> We got ghosts on our back, you know? They come after us. Yeah. No, hey, just, world, cut sorry. us a break. We got ghosts chasing <laughs> after us. Uh, I am uh, entirely kidding. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but serious about the ghost stuff. Um, the ghost stuff. So right. anyway, they get the idea to say, hey, we should get into this house. We should find a ghost or this ghost's head, Andrew. That's what the kids are entering the tour with the idea to separate from the tour, explore the house, and find the head because it's never been found. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they need a new high. They need a new terror high, a, 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 a harder hit. Yes, they've, they've, they're they hooked. And it's established, right, that this, this hill house, the nondescript hill house, is a tourist destination that is the only thing in town and that they like to go all the time, which honestly is a pretty cool like high school kid thing to do, mm-hmm. just like do haunted house tours. They talk about like teens going on dates there and stuff. That sounds great. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would probably do that all the time. Yeah. Uh, if that was, uh, there was nothing in uh, my hometown. So, which, oh yeah, Elspeth and I have the same hometown. Random, Yay. random, random fun fact. If if South Bend, Indiana had a haunted house <laughs> that you could do a tour of, as opposed to going to Steak and Shake, I would do that all the time. <laughs> Dude, did you know they closed Steak and Shake? No! Dude, I'm not oh! even kidding. I drove by it. I'm like, what happened to the sign? And my mom was like, it's closed. I'm like, what? That was a Someone staple. got their head torn off. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's just gone. What are the teens going to do now? <laughs> Someone was going through the drive through and a sea captain grabbed his head. <laughs> <in the> <laughs> uh, I, I got to say, I have a spooky coincidence about that. Uh, they opened a steak and shake in my old childhood neighborhood. Whoa. Paul, don't go. Paul, do hold not on, go. Hold on, no. It burnt down within the first <gasps> week of being open. <gasps> oh. Yeah, spooky yeah. stuff's that's, happening. Wow, that's oof. 
my bro- my brother always wanted to go to Sizzler as a kid, and my parents were like, "No, that's way too ma- too 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 much money for seven children and two <laughs> yeah. parents to go to Sizzler." <laughs> and so for his birthday, it was his birthday, and they were like, "Fine, we'll take you to Sizzler." We drove up to Sizzler. Sizzler had burned down. <laughs> oh, oh man! Your brother lived a Jack Handy joke, basically. <laughs> Yeah, That's essentially, Dis- yeah. <laughs> Disneyland burned down. So, Elspeth, yeah. take take us through some of the horrors that these children witnessed yeah. on their journey through the the Hill House. Absolutely. So, so they they take the tour and they're like, "Man, we we already know what's going on. We we know what's going on here. We know this tour by mm-hmm. heart." So, poor Otto is trying to like guide everybody. He's a tour guide, right? He's like this huge hulking guy. And so, Stephanie and Dwayne are like, Stephanie's like, "Dude, we're gonna. We're just gonna go on our own tour, and Dwayne's like, mm-hmm. "Uh, I'm. Well, maybe we shouldn't." And he's like secretly hoping, "Well, maybe, maybe she'll change her mind and we'll leave." But obviously they don't. <laughs> obviously they don't. Um, like this kid gets scared of the moss like growing on the house outside. Like he is freaked out already. He's chicken shit. He's chicken yeah. shitting. So, so they, <laughs> <laughs> so they're uh, they finally like break away from the tour. And obviously, like, they start getting lost and they start hearing they start hearing things. And like every chapter, you know, somehow ends with, oh, my God, there it is. There's the head. And they, they're looking for this kid's head. And Stephanie, Stephanie freaks out. She's like, dude, the head's right over there. And Dwayne's like, oh, my God, it's a, it's a fucking bowling ball, dude. Like, it's a bowling okay, that ball that's just was... sitting there in the hallway. Yeah. So it's a bowling ball. So it actually is head. That was fucked up. Not just a bowling ball, a wooden bowling yeah. ball. So like with two, two holes. holes. With two holes. I had no idea. Like that's a that's a historical fact. I had no clue that they only had two holes. Ha- has anyone fact checked that to make I, sure I, that it wasn't just the author you know, bullshitting? I'm like, is this actually a thing? Two holes. I in did bowling a bowling ball. I did a little googling. Couldn't find anything. It does feel like a fact that RL would want us to know. Like right. he learned it and yeah. thought it was interesting and put it in there. I bet RL had one. <laughs> That's, that's he he used one. Nobody bowls the old way. <laughs> as we as we've kind of uncovered that uh, RL has admitted that he had like really bad asthma and allergies and spent all of his time indoors watching other kids play, which is probably why he hates kids so much wants to punish them. Right. Uh-huh, I yes. bet and he did have <laughs> I, I bet he had an old wooden ball and he would have to play bowling in his house yeah. and his mom would be like, "Oh, RL, you got to stop rolling those balls in the house. I'm trying to work on my accounting or whatever her parents were. <laughs> and and then he's just like, oh, okay. That's the only joy he had was this wooden uh, antique bowling, my bowling ball. ball. And then he stuck googly mm. eyes on it, kept it for his kids. And, and that was his friend. And now <laughs> his, that was his friend. Uh, just like Wilson. The ball friend. Uh, ball friend. Yeah, the ball friend. Yes, of course. So Wilson. so they find this bowling ball, and then eventually it just becomes like Spooky's House jump scares where they're they're going through it. They hear like thumps, <laughs> mm-hmm. and they, they, they run into cats because they're like, oh my God, there's these glowing eyes in front of us, and then all of a sudden there's all these yellow, yeah. yellow glowing eyes, and it's like just a room full of freaking cats, right? So so then these cats freak them out and they're like, okay, well we'll just we'll just keep going. Uh, obviously we're super lost. So they go down this hallway. I'm sorry, can we talk about the cats for a second, Elspeth? I, I just want to yeah. stop for yeah. Oh, you're doing a great job, by the way. This is you it feels like you've been on this show for 20 episodes because you're you're a pro. <laughs> oh God bless uh, it. Right. But there's a room full of cats. They're not ghost cats. They're not mummy cats. Those are real cats, and they're like scariest thing. You don't smell the piss. They don't talk about smelling mm, the piss, which you know that you would, would smell be a the lot piss. of piss. Uh, I was gonna say, scary thing. Who's taking care of those cats? They're they're taking care of each other, the cats, dude. The cats take care of themselves. Yeah, Hell yeah, that is that is for sure a a cyclical. Like they're those are cannibal cats, dude. Oh, uh, yeah. that would have actually been genuinely more terrifying if the cats tried to eat the kids. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would have yeah. been cool. I actually just read in a uh, a headline today that uh, there there was a man who was missing, and then they found human re- remains in his dog's. Feces. No. Oh, no. Well, that yeah. makes sense. But uh, but I uh, but but was it was it okay? Like b- was it was he mean to the dog? Like did he abuse the dog? And the dog was like, I'm not taking this shit anymore, and he ate him and murdered him. <laughs> no, he. T- what happened was he was like, I'm going, Charlie. The name of this dog, <laughs> and he's like, I know you've always looked at me and licked your lips. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I feel like I've made peace being a pet owner that like, you know, Archie the dog, uh, little trash rat will 
definitely eat my dead yeah. body within days, and I'm fine. I'm fine. I'd rather yeah. he. I'd be happy to feed my animal one last time. Dude, me too. Yeah, right. I mean, I've got I've got two plans for my dead body. I'm either a an organ donor or b a fucking last meal for my pet. <laughs> if and and Elspeth, if both that's good. if the second one's true, you're kind of both. Oh yeah. my god, that's so true. You donate your organs well, to their body, to their stomach. For the meal, yeah. I just want it to be like, not to get too dark. I can just see like, you know, that happens. And also great, great that you're an organ donor. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> you, you pass away of natural causes. It's a really peaceful death. Why am I describing the details of your de- death, Elspeth? I don't know. Because uh, uh, no, it's, it's goosebumps, dude. Because this, goose, this is goosebuds. This yep. is goosebuds. And the, and the organ uh, donor retrieval people show up and they're like, Oh, good. We can get all our organs. Ah, oh, the dog gnawed on this liver, though. Ah, oh, it's got like bite marks all over it. We just can't. Can we tape it up? It's can we fine. Tape it? Yeah, just, sure. Just yeah, boil it, dude. <laughs> boil it off. Get rid of all the dog germs. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying though. You were recapping after our 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 cat room that they found. Yeah. So so after the cat room, um, they they go through the hallway and they think they're being touched by ghosts, but. Again, you know, it's just another just another uh, uh, thing that R.L. Stein does where he leads us down the path. You think it's going to be real mm-hmm. spooks, and it's not. It's freaking cobwebs. So, you know, after after these cobwebs, and they're like, all right, all right, that's it. We're really, we're really caught up to the tour because they start hearing people. And mm. it turns out it's not people. There, There's just this, this like, this closed doors, right? And they listen, and they're like, oh, there's definitely people in there. There's definitely the tour. And they open the door. Obviously, there's no one inside. They're, they go in now and they're like, spooky. oh, whoa, we definitely thought that Tour was in here. Where is everybody? And uh, they, 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 they feel like cold air and everything. They feel like, oh, no, the ghosts are definitely in here. <laughs> they're definitely here, bro. Like, we just we just crashed their party. Like, she literally says, we just crashed their party. So, mm-hmm. so after that, after that, it's Spook City because then they can't fucking find the stairs. <laughs> they go through yeah. the hall and they go through all these rooms and everything. They're like, well, where's the where's the stairs? Like, they, they, they literally lose the stairs. They get ghost bamboozled. Yeah, absolutely. They get ghost house of leaves, if I can make that reference. Yes. One of my favorite oh, books. Yeah. You know what? I still Luke haven't did. read the book and I have to. It's on my list of things to read for like 15 years now. It's the um, hardest thing to recommend because you show someone the book and it's one where like the font is like an art form where like, You'll open up and there's just a blank page with one word on it. It looks incredibly pretentious, but okay. the scariest part of the whole thing is describing uh, a house where it's like this, where like the hallways can twist and turn mm. and, and doors can disappear and you can get completely lost in a living labyrinth. And I was like, for a second, I was like, oh, shit, this book's going to get really good. This is gonna, this- I love I love books about crazy houses. The way, the way you're making it sound <laughs> is that this book was not good after... You were like, this book's really good, and then it, it just no, fell apart. It kind of fell apart. Well, I mean, it depends how you feel about uh, new kids adding the part joining to the party. Oh yeah, mm. no. Well, it's just scratch that. I'm done. <laughs> so fi- finally, finally, as they're as they're as they're wandering, they're like, where are we? Otto finds them. Yeah. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, and I have a detail about Otto. That oh they, yeah. Uh, mentioned in the book, they said he looks like a dolphin. <laughs> like he he's bald and he looks like a dolphin. He must weigh three hundred pounds. Mm-hmm. A dolphin. Dolphins are pretty thin. They're live, live creatures. You know, right. I've never benched a dolphin. I'll be honest. I've never like <laughs> never lifted it, so I can't say for sure. Don't worry. I'm looking up the average weight for a dolphin, guys. I got to think a hundred and forty pounds. What kind of dolphin are we talking about here? Because there's a range, guys. Dude, I just think- give us just give us a number. The bo- the bottle nose. Yeah, bottle nose. Bottle nose is the default dolphin. Bottle nose, great. Everyone knows that one. Dom, you're gonna be blown away. Three hundred and thirty pounds. Three hundred and thirty pounds. Whoa! Whoa. Dolphins are buff. <laughs> <laughs> they're just muscle. They're just long muscle tubes. Right. That to actually, fuck that shit actually up. is crazy to me. I've always thought that oh, because they're so graceful and how you know they're just able to be so free in the water. Like they're probably yeah, no, maybe, maybe one fifty, but no. Yeah. They're big chunk. Hey, can we not let's let's not fat shame the dolphins, please? No, no, they're, no. No, no, no they're fat just shaming entirely here. It's just muscle. I, I would not assume that they were so girthy. Like yeah. Well they 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 do fly out of the water. <laughs> so <laughs> you must have you must have some muscle 
you know? That's a feat. That's a lot. That's a muscle, Have you ever dude. tried to jump out of water? You can't do it. No. I, I All the time I try to flip my little legs and, and kick out of it. No. I can't, can't. Get, I can't get any air. And I'm 300 pounds, so I don't know what the fuck I'm doing wrong. <laughs> What's the problem? Uh, so... So so Otto finds the kids, brings them back to the tour. They're, he's like, what are you guys doing up here? You're not about, allowed to be up here. And they were like, uh, we uh, heard a voice. Uh, we thought it was the tour. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> also, that that is a very scary part to me in the book. I think that was the part where I was freaked out the most, where they're going down the stairs in the darkness, and they hear someone coming up the stairs, and they can't like turn around. So I was like, I was like ooh, ooh, I've actually had nightmares about this, mm. which was, yeah. Because either you're going to get caught yeah, by a ghost yeah. or caught by an adult and get in trouble. Yeah, dude. Either way, you're fucked. It's very scary. Yeah, very scary. So they, they reconvene with the tour, and um, they meet a kid on the tour named Seth. Mm. And uh, I believe, they, I, I, what happens? They, they, they get, they get they, the tour ends, and then they reconvene after they, that? They get or pulled, they uh, get... Yeah, they're like, oh, hey, the other old lady who also runs the group that we've never heard about, really, uh, that they Edna. also like, she's running the group. Edna, thank you is running the group i had to come find you Otto says by the way when you guys described Otto, i kept picturing him as a strong guy from the x-men but that's just me oh yeah uh yeah that's, that's i was like i was going more maybe like um gigantic like russian bouncer yes uh, very much with a very shiny <laughs> head and very beady eyes and he had like he had like um like one of those big ass sweaters on too like it's like black and white striped and he's just like this hulking. I ass. know exactly what you're talking about describing a Russian bouncer. With yeah, that. That I is. don't know why that was just my like <laughs> my image of him. I was thinking a uh, sea captain. Okay, oh. like a uh, like a uh, sweater, maybe a little cap on his bald head, mm. like a like like from Gilligan's Island, like the captain. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, so George R. R. Martin, basically. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but anyway, so they they reconvene and uh, they they're on the tour again, and they meet Seth. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. The tour ends, and then they're like, "Yo, Seth, you like ghosts? You want to check this he's place just, out?" He's, he's just been like, staring at me. Yeah. And yeah. Seth goes, "Dude, you know, dude." I've been in here. I seen a ghost. A ghost backwards slid down the banister. It was scary. It's yeah. A ghost. A ghost screamed in my mouth until I peed a little bit and then disappeared. <laughs> well, <laughs> I also think, I also think this is like it's kind of an important detail. I think, and also we saw Seth earlier on the book just staring at the group. Right, yeah. like they see mm. they see a boy down the hallway. No one else notices him. And the kids don't call it out. So it's clearly like, oh, that's a ghost just watching them. Don't worry about it. But when they leave mm-hmm. the tour after it's closed, it's not until they get outside that they meet Seth, right? Like he's like in yeah. a bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like catches yes. up to him yeah. super quickly. And the thing about Seth mm-hmm. is that he's not ch- He has no chill. He's very intense. No. Like if you looked at this kid, you'd be like, is he like maybe tripping or something? Like he, he <laughs> he's probably on something. Like he is just staring so intensely right now. He has no... Yeah, he, he's doing that high thing where he's like staring. Yeah. And he's like, they see, they know I'm staring yeah, at him, right. but they doesn't doesn't break it. He doesn't break it. He's like, they know I'm fucking staring. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! <laughs> That's what he's doing the whole time. Exactly. Uh, so they like, I, I guess what I find interesting is right is they're like, yeah, if you want to get the real ghosts, we got to go back in after the tour closes. The ghosts mm-hmm. they don't come out for the tours. They no. come out for smaller, more intimate groups. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes sense to me. Sure, it makes sense. Sure, 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 sure. I, th- we all know that more people you add to a group ghost hunting d- proportionally lowers the chance of running into a ghost, mm-hmm. which is why the reality shows don't work. Yeah, I was going to say, and that's why you're only allowed to sit with three f- or two other friends on the Haunted Mansion ride at Disney World. No more. No more. If yes. not, the ghost won't show up. So mm-hmm. I, I just think that's an interesting detail. But I don't know about for you guys. Like, I was kind of invested as bad as this book is. And as much as all the jump scares have just been the RL, like, tried and true, uh, yeah. oh, the, the ghost hands were cobwebs, and oh, the person mm-hmm. that grabbed me was Stephanie. What a surprise. Mm-hmm. I don't know how, I don't know any positive in a horror story to lose all momentum where it's like, hey, let's leave the house, decompress, right. re- recompose ourselves, and let's go right back in. <laughs> right. I think like the only purpose of that was to be like everybody in this town sleeps a lot. And <laughs> yeah. these kids stay up. Everyone's a heavy sleeper. <laughs> Everyone's a heavy heavy sleeper except for these three kids. That's pretty much the only detail we got out of that break, mm-hmm. Chad. That's mm-hmm. very true. So they're like we're right right back into it. It's like going back into the level. Yeah. 
and, mm-hmm. and so they, and so they go into the house and um we get the dumb waiter story yeah we get the dumb waiter story which is also in hill house the other the actual hill house i'm pretty sure uh-huh, yes. But we don't get any of the strawberry ice cream, sadly, in the book. I know. I was like, I'm waiting for it. Like, well, what, 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 what about the ice cream? I thought they did something with the ice cream. Must have just been for the show. I'm sorry. That must have been so disappointing That's okay. for you, Elspeth. <laughs> uh, honestly, the Dumbwater <laughs> story is maybe the scariest part of the whole book for me. Yeah. Of, it is terrifying. Yes. Yeah, they, te- they tell a story of another group of kids mm-hmm. that Seth knows about, but he wasn't part of it, right? Uh, they snuck in. They wanted to ride the dumbwaiter up, and I love that they had to mm-hmm. describe what a dumbwaiter is because it's such an old-fashioned rich person uh-huh. thing. Uh-huh. That 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 beforehand they would the chef would put food on the dumbwaiter and raise it all the way to the top, and then the food would be gone, as if the ghosts just eat the food, like they're just mischievous little 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 snackers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As, as if that is something scary. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like, oh, what fun ghosts! You're, you're feeding the ghosts. Let's do it. Yeah. But they tell the story of some kids who break into the place and want to ride the dumbwaiter up. Mm -hmm. One of them, as they are riding the dumbwaiter, the rope got stuck and the dumbwaiter was stuck between floors, which is genuinely terrifying. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's triggering all my claustrophobia. Oh, yeah. And then when they finally lowered the dumbwaiter, the boy was gone, but instead were three bowls, and underneath each bowl was like an organ of his. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, his beat, his still beating heart, his uh, disembodied eyes, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, still, his, still freaked out. His still, yeah. freaked, still freaked out, out eyes. and his chattering teeth. <laughs> I'd like to know, know how. I'd like to know how eyeballs themselves could look anything. <laughs> right. Well, when they're out of the head, they're just always scared. They're always scared, right? But, but. The fact that he had to put like an adjective before these eyeballs, I'm like, they're not going to look any other way, dude. You can't. What, what I think Elspeth is, is that, because I think it's a very fair question. I had that same. What I yes. think uh-huh, is uh-huh. it was on a dinner tray, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And when they came back down, the ghost had rearranged his eyeballs with some French fries to look like little <laughs> surprised eyebrows. Now that is spooky food. Right? That's some spooky food. They right play a little there. food prank on him. Hey, yo, a little food prank. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clever ghost. Uh-huh. I'm into that, Chad. Yeah, I was trying to figure that out too. It was really, it was really hurting my brain. That's canon. Still staring in horror. Yeah, the, I mean, I guess they are going to be. That that's what they do. That's canon. <laughs> also, <laughs> that's the teeth, canon. the still chattering teeth. Yeah. Either been, they were they were loose teeth or jumping around like Mexican jumping beans, mm-hmm. or <laughs> or they had removed the jaw from the skull. Mm-hmm. That's probably likely. Yeah. Either way, it was and confusing. Aren't, aren't Mexican jumpy beans just moths? Is that what those are? Yeah. I just thought they were haunted beans. I, I thought, thought for some reason beans. they were bugs that you put in like plastic balls to make them jump. I don't, oh my God. I don't know. You're so right. A tiny moth larva inside makes a jumping bean jump. Oh, gross. In the spring, when the shrub is flowering, moths lay their eggs on the shrub's hanging seed pods. It's really a seed. It's not a bean. So that's something that like as a kid, you would be able to acquire one way or the other. Be like, yeah, it's a Mexican jumping bean. Yeah, you should buy it. Isn't it wacky? Isn't it cool? And then you just have a moth. Like it stops <laughs> jumping at some point and a moth is in your home. <laughs> why 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 Mexican? Are, because they're native to Mexico. Oh, are, are they? they? Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Frijoles oh, saltarinas in Spanish are the seed pods that have been inhabited by the larva of a small moth. Oh, it's okay. so sad. It jumps when it's heated. <laughs> it jumps when it's heated because the larva spasms in an attempt to roll the seed to a cooler environment to avoid dehydration and consequent death. Oh my god. That's the real scary. That's so sad. It's trying to live. Yeah, you're just a child watching a thing slowly suffer. Yeah, man. Die. Put put those beans, put those boys in a little uh, little cool corner so you can you can keep Put em. those beans in the fridge. <laughs> put, those, <laughs> put those beans in the fridge. Yo, this is why you always refrigerate your beans, folks. <laughs> Okay, so the the real story, the real horror story is anyway. the jumping beans. I just want to open a fridge and just have a a, a family a a family of moths come out. Like I'll just open a fridge and it's just like <laughs> that's scary. Yeah. That is terrifying. Yep. Where'd the beans go? They ate the beans, grew strong, and escaped. Why are my beans all flat? You know, some fucking kids ate some beans at some point <laughs> on a dare. You know, like, across America, some kids ate some Mexican jumping beans. Oh, yeah. Oh, for oh, sure. Oh, hell yeah. For yeah. Sh- oh, for sure, bud. <laughs> so after they talk about this really scary dumbwaiter, they uh, they go, the Seth takes them 
into the uh, pantry and locks them in, turns around, and then begins to threaten Dwayne, saying that he fooled them and that he's a ghost mm-hmm. and he pretends to, to be about to pull his head off. He scares chicken shit Dwayne. Chicken shit Dwayne looks away and then says, I need your head, Dwayne. I need your head, which causes our, our, our <laughs> children, our children <laughs> friends to run away, find a secret entrance, be chased by a Terminator Seth who's running like a Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Very scary. Very, very scary. Mm-hmm. They, they uh, crash into a wall. Uh, because they're tall enough, and that's a danger to tall. A hidden, a hidden uh, wall, by the way, right? It was like wall. a hidden bookcase mm-hmm. wall thing. Mm-hmm, yes. Uh huh. After, after they do the tourney, the tourney wall, the classic, you know, back up to a wall, it turns around, and you and you're in a secret entrance. They do that. They find a ladder. I kind of lost what happened here. I was a little confused. I think they were climbing a ladder and then a wall exploded. So Seth, this detail is what also threw me, Paul, because I was also losing track. Mm-hmm. I swore I read, and I'll define it again, that Seth took his head off. Like no, for- so he-, he starts to tug, right? Yeah, and that's when Chicken Shit Dwayne, our perspective character, Chicken Shitly, looks down <laughs> and doesn't pay attention to it. Chicken Shitly. Yeah. So <laughs> that makes more sense now. Okay. That's how that's how the the trick is pulled the wool is pulled over his eyes. Okay. The, so Seth adds the detail <laughs> that I've borrowed a head and yes. I need to borrow yours now, but he keeps saying that and never says where he got the other head from and i thought that right. was like such a the major head. clue and detail that i he, it drove me crazy well so this is like you're expecting a twist at any point mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. we're all waiting for the twist mm-hmm. to come and and they do this to us and we're like here's our twist and you're like oh i should have seen it coming he was wearing a turtleneck you know like this kid is committed to this trick that he's playing on them and he chases them we, we finally realize okay there here's the here's the twist the ghost is going to go after them they run away. Again, don't know what happens. They climb a ladder at some point and a wall explodes. That's all I know is that a wall explodes. Not, I mean, maybe another trick wall. I don't know. No, it, yeah, it seemed like how I read it, just to describe, I don't know if you guys had a different, how I read it was they run down a dark Resident Evil 2 hallway. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, this mm-hmm. wall we're against, this wall must also turn. They keep pushing against for it way too work. long. Doesn't work. And then finally they see a ladder. And then I guess the... In my mind, like the rigging of the ladder is so flimsy and it's such an old house that it pulls the wall down with it as the oh, ladder comes down. That's how I read that's, it. Yeah, the wall makes... was breaking apart and we were falling. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, I feel gotcha. like this would have killed them possibly. I mean, yes. it depends on how far they they fell. But but man, you, you, you fall onto concrete, you're going to bust something. <laughs> Elspeth, he says, Dwayne describes himself as bouncing twice off of the ground, yeah. which is insane. Oh, that's, Jesus, I didn't. <laughs> that is some, that's, that's some that's impact, you know? Yeah, he took a spell. He took a little bit of a spell. Uh, but he has kid strength, which means yes. <laughs> you can endure basically any type of uh, of of injury. And if you take if you take that fall as, a, as an adult, your skeleton breaks. Yeah, your skull <laughs> doesn't solidify until twenty five. So you could just take a bunch of hits on your soft brain and whenever you need. Oh yeah, that's so true, oh, dude. Yeah. I sit down in a chair and I feel my spine crack. Like this is mm-hmm. whew, these bones are creaking. <laughs> You've got like yeah. You've got- <laughs> Serious micro fractures going on in your in your spine right now, Elspeth. <laughs> so these kids fall to are they're seeming deaf, but they survive. Uh, and the wall cracks open. And what do they see inside of the wall? I I don't oh, the, know. I didn't understand. I I barely followed what happened here. Y- yeah, I like I kind of understood what happened. Like a ghost with a very l- large collar is there, very much like the headless horseman, but just a headless ghost. Well, that appears after they see the head. Yeah, the head of of Andrew Crawl. Mm-hmm. But this is this is in yet another hidden room. So they like mm-hmm. there's all these walls and shit that they have to push on, and this is like the third time this happened. So they're like, oh, of course, this wall. Uh, uh-huh. crumbles down and and it's another hidden room. Yeah, it's a double secret double yes. secret room. Yes. But that's why that's why the head was never found, you guys, because mm-hmm. it was in a double secret. That's why Andrew the Ghost couldn't find it, but Andrew the Ghost shows up, reclaims his head, doesn't say a fucking word, doesn't even say thank he you. He mouths the words thank you. Oh, does he? Oh, I take yeah. it back. I'm sorry, Andrew the Ghost. Well, he did. Well, no, you're right. He doesn't. He doesn't say a word. He mouths the words "thank you," which could have been mm-hmm. him just saying "fuck you" as he vanished, and they thought he said "thank That's you" true. or "vacuum" or "vacuum." Right. I'm not sure. <laughs> At this point, though, in the book, in the book, we're convinced that that Andrew 
uh, that Seth is Andrew. That Seth so is Andrew, So Seth yeah. shows up as, you know, Andrew or whatever, but he's fr- freaking the fuck out because he's like, oh, God, it's actually, like, the head that's not actually mm-hmm. mine because I'm, I'm, you know, playing a prank on these dudes. Uh-huh. So he then Andrew, the bunch- real Andrew, goes, is like, yo, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks, bros. Peace. Thanks, bros. I'm out. And that's and that's basically that's the end because, <laughs> because Seth Seth gets revealed for being a jerk off mm-hmm. and and lying to these people. His uncle Otto shows up mm-hmm. and and yells at him, tells him to get the fuck out, stop lying. And, and he's done this before. Wins. He's like, "Have you been tricking people into thinking you're a ghost again?" Right. Yes. How would they yes. never met this kid? They've taken this tour so many times, but they don't know that mm-hmm. they don't know that he has. Right. Yeah. They thought you know what. They acted like they knew Otto, well, but they didn't get to know him. Right? They didn't really get to know him. There's a twist. There's another fly in that ointment. Uh, well, okay, so so someone someone wrapped this up because I don't know what the fuck happened, and I want to oh, talk about it. Okay, so here's how so... I interpreted the ending. No, Elspeth, please, please, please take away Elspeth. Okay, so of course they they're like, let's just take another tour for old times' sake, and so they go mm-hmm. into the house, and there's no Seth. Obviously, Seth fucked off. So um, they, they go on this tour with Otto, and no, he's just he's just gone. Um, like literally, mm-hmm. they they never talk about Seth again. I guess he just you know went went home, whatever. Mm-hmm. So then, then they leave. You know, it's it's nightfall, and then this these policemen pull up, and they're like, "Hey, what the what are you guys doing?" And they're they point at the house, and the kids are like, "Well, we just went on the tour, you know, bro." And then the officers like, "What are you what are you talking about? The house is empty. There hasn't been anyone there all winter." Mm-hmm. Right, so so uh, the, you know we get like the little the, the the shot of the kid looking at the house like whoa, there's Otto and Edna whoa. right there in the window. They're ghosts chilling in the window. How did I not see it? Here's the really scary thing. It might be less scary if they were ghosts the whole time, but what's really scary is Otto and Edna died within the last three months. Yeah, so they they, they right because the detail is they all left. Winter passes. Uh, mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. both get into new hobbies and I thought it was weird that like one's like I got really into sports the other one got into <laughs> acting is either going to be Dorothy or a munchkin I was like cool so yeah. just falling into stereotypical trope rules guys just uh-huh. like and and then they decide to yeah, go back she like joined she joined the theater club and yeah uh-huh. uh, but like Wait. it's not it's not even a payoff of anything they've been into like you could Seth you, got drafted into Vietnam <laughs> You never saw him. <laughs> he, he, he faded away. <laughs> Seth married the local lifeguard, and they got together. Had six kids. There is there there is a ghost detail. I have to. I, I just remember that really made sure. me laugh. Sure. The headless ghost. After getting his ghost, after mouthing "thank you," he puts his arms straight up into the air like <laughs> Superman, and he flies away. <laughs> into <laughs> space. No way! Did I don't. What? <laughs> <laughs> I missed that detail. Yeah, that's anyway, wonderful. I just, I, I just had to bring that up. I was just thinking about that. But yeah, got drafted into Vietnam. <laughs> I just think it's really, really creepy. That these kids went on a tour with the ghosts of people that died within the last three months that they were friends with. Yeah, that's that, well, really fucked also, up. Also, it's kind of presumptuous because they're like, okay, so the place closed down. There's no tours anymore, but they don't say that Otto died. They don't say that Edna died. It's the most popular thing. Yeah, it's the most popular thing in town. They seem right? to be it's very this... good friends with Otto. You would hope to think they would have heard about the funeral and go to it. About yeah, his death. Maybe <laughs> in the paper, you know, uh, Hill House closes because of tragic accident of yeah so yeah. they they were so obsessed with their high school lives they didn't even know i guess it's before the internet uh yeah, maybe true. maybe winter claimed them you know <laughs> well, so they were like you're mine you're not gonna get through this one i mean it is drafty in there they're always talking about like the windows being open and they never or those cats them. those goddamn cats ate them those cats dude oh shit uh, that's shit. what it was it was the cats fuck they got drafted and then they got catted <laughs> i i actually read it that's what happens when you die from a draft <laughs> <laughs> <Drafted>. <laughs> I actually read it not as they were ghosts because that's so because all of the reasons you guys point out that it's nuts. I read mm. it as like, oh, no, they're just two people who have no other lives now. So they just run tours for free. Like mm-hmm. uh-huh. they just are still alive and they just give free tours and maybe squat in the house. I like that. Chad, I like that ending. That's a nice, happy ending. It is. <laughs> 
it's, it's still two people without a job and squatting, but it's better than just, yeah, these old people died who weren't even together. Like they were different ages and they were just friends. Where'd all the other people come from who went on the tours? Were they ghosts too? I, yeah, what the hell? Was it ghost all, was was it it ghost like all ghost the way down? In from the town, they're like, we're just going to go take a ghost tour because we're, we're ghosts. Because we're ghost tourists. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> there was a moment where ghost. Ghost tour is where I was like, if I swear tourism. to God, if that whole tour group is ghosts, I'm going to throw this fucking book in the ocean. I'm going to be. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, if there I, were 12 I, I, ghosts. I guess they had to be, right? Because no one had, had been in there all winter. But but that just makes sense. Well, it, I think it was the first group they went with were real people, I guess. Right. They get caught. Yeah. They sneak away. They get brought back and punished. And like Otto's like, please don't sneak away in the upstairs areas. It's private. That's where we and Edna squat and live here. Uh, <laughs> and then three months pass and they go on another tour, a private tour. And that is just them as ghosts, I guess. I, I Sure. Fine. That That's actually a great idea. If you are homeless, uh -huh. you should find an abandoned home. <gasps> yeah. Move in and then start giving ghost tours. That's really smart. That's a great idea. Just All think right. about it. There was actually uh uh in my old neighborhood, uh down the street there was this this like three story home. And one mm -hmm. night uh the cops were all around this home because uh on the third floor there was a body decomposing and it had been <gasps> abandoned. Oh, no! The house had been abandoned for a very long time. And someone was up there and found this body just on the third floor. No. Yeah. Dude, it was, and it looks like a fucking haunted house too. So I'm just like, oh my God, I have to move. I'm, I gotta move. I gotta go. <laughs> Later. I'm out. <laughs> I could die in any house. I gotta get out. <laughs> That's some Rose for Emily shit. <laughs> that, whole, that whole time in this book, I, I did keep thinking, is it really that hard to find a, a, a head? Because yeah, it would be decomposing. It'd be smelling yeah, real bad. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, were, the, were the police investigators just like not trying in the 1900s when a child had his head uh -huh. ripped off? I, I guess I don't. I like, mean, who put it behind the freaking stone <laughs> wall thing? How yeah. did they get behind there? Who was able to lock it or build the freaking like the, the concrete? So the ghost ghost sailor took the child's head off just because he was looking for his wife. Mm -hmm. Took the child's head, went and and built an elaborate series of of brick wall and mortar and like did all the putting construction himself. Right. Uh, -huh. uh, maybe he went down to the local Home Depot and got some uh, undocumented workers. <laughs> so there's no paper trail. But like he he put the head <laughs> in behind two walls of concrete and then Home the ghost Depot because the ghost. Yeah, the yeah, 1900s home <laughs> Home Depot, and then and and then like basically the ghost boy couldn't find his head because he's like, well, I can't go through walls, so fuck, I'm shit. I guess I can't find the ha the head at all. That's how you stump a ghost, man. Uh, you yeah. gotta hide it from the ghost. Uh, it, it's it's such a weird, convoluted backstory for just one page of ghost. It was this book was filled with creepy imagery. But what the hell was that all about? Yeah. What the fuck just happened? Yeah. It was basically like they were all ghosts the entire time. Like that that's yeah. that's the gist <laughs> of it. They were all ghosts. Uh, this whole town is ghosts. The kids were ghosts. Everybody was ghosts. Everyone's ghost. You're a ghost. <laughs> Everyone's a ghost. The kid they dumped spiders on was a ghost. <laughs> Do you guys remember? This is that old Doom creepypasta that just ends with no John. You are the demons. And then John was a zombie. I don't know if you guys know that old creepypasta. It's one of no, my favorites. No, I don't know that one. But it's just it's that. it's just that. It's just that as, a, as an entire mm -hmm. book that RL or whoever freelance wrote this padded out for 200 pages. Mm -hmm. And I'm so mad. Yeah, I feel like this was filler content for whatever he was probably putting more effort into otherwise. Yes. He was like, I'll just, you know, write some stupid fuck off story about how these kids are like in this house and they're all ghosts. <laughs> like, because really it ended every like this, it felt like everything was just so ham fisted. Like, and then it was actually a, the claws of the monster that came after. Oh, what? Well, no, nope, just Stephanie. Just kidding. Uh, just, <laughs> just, just, Steph. just kidding. Playing a trick. Like half of this shit was Stephanie. So I'm just like, it's Stephanie again, dude. Like Stephanie's probably going to end up being Andrew. Yeah. And upsetting. That would have been cool if Stephanie. It would have been cool if Stephanie was actually Dwayne and Steph and Dwayne didn't really. <gasps> that would have uh, been <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that we should probably wrap this one up, right? Yeah, I think that's it. I mean, El Elspeth, do you have any like 
any other like lasting impressions getting to kind of dive back into this mucky no, muck with us please, dude let's wrap this up this is this is not a good goosebumps <laughs> book this is no. this, i'm mm-hmm. upset because i was really expecting like more to happen in it where i'm like oh but the, but this is probably oh but never mind i guess it's just i guess it's just it's, oh but they're getting locked in the freaking like freezer and he's actually gonna oh, oh no it's uh, actually he's just not he's not the ghost it, it, 19 chapters no ghosts yeah Oh, no it like, literally happens at the end, and he, he he comes out in like, and it's a classic like Disneyland haunted mansion ghost where he, yeah. he flies down. I'm like, wait a minute, where's the actual like spooks here? You do you tell me the ghost isn't even gonna be scary? Like he just Superman's out of here and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like I was upset. I gotta say. The entire time I was reading this, I was disappointed for you because Thank I you. knew this is your goosebumps. <laughs> like, why are we doing this to this person? Thanks, why man. are we making Elspeth read this? <laughs> it, it was very nice of you to, to join us. Oh, yes. dude, no, my pleasure. I have a final question about the ghost. Ghost <laughs> logic. He flies away. The ghost flies away. Do ghosts live on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Dom? We went to the moon one time. Got did, the fuck out. Did and never we? Went back. Did we? Yeah, because it was turning. Right. Da- it was. It was turning da- dark time. It was turning night time. We got, we said we got to fly out of here. I think the ghosts are on the dark side of the moon. The dark side of the moon that we have never checked. That also has yeah. all the Decepticons hidden. That Decepticons that is where the ghosts are. There. Zombies are there. Vampire. A Dracula lives there. Oh, Dracula sure. lives there all the time. Yeah. Without a doubt, that's where all the scary stuff lives, and we're never going back. Fuck the moon. <laughs> Elspeth, yeah. thank you for joining us. Where can people find you and your stuff? Uh, you can find me and my stuff uh, on Twitter at Elspeth Eastman, and I usually I'm on Twitch, so I I, I, I oh, do yeah. stream thing, and uh, that's twitch.tv slash Elspeth. And I do things there and I make bad jokes. And I would love to talk about Goosebumps because Goosebumps yes. is a jam. And even though this book was not one of his best, I'm still happy to be here. So thanks for having me on the podcast. It was a pleasure. Maybe we'll do a Give Yourself Goosebumps uh, another time. Maybe in the future, come back. I would love to. We'll give ourselves Goosebumps. Have you guys done a Camp Jelly Jam yet? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, that one's so good. <laughs> One of the greatest Goosebumps books ever written. Yes, agreed. Yes. Agreed. Mm-hmm. I read that one so much that it was like the, the spine was falling off of it. It was just like, that. this is a good one. Much like King Jelly Jam himself, mm-hmm. the spine was falling off of it. Oh, <laughs> got him. Oh, got him. Yeah. <laughs> also, everyone, go, if you haven't already, go buy Cadence of Hyrule right now. Yeah. Uh, I also, I by the way, I was always too intimidated. I found that there's a mode where you can like turn off the beats. So if you're like, oh yeah, there's an easy mode. If you don't have rhythm like I, like me, you can play it. I'm now, I'm now very excited to try it. Chad, were you in? Were you in a ska band? Oh yeah, but it's on the it's on the uh, t- uh what was it on the ones and threes, not the twos and fours. So I'm <laughs> just oh, constantly okay. up. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm constantly trying to beats. pick it up you're, when they want me to put it down. Elspeth, gotcha. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, dudes. Thank you guys. Thank you. Woo. We'll see you guys all next time. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Why do we not sign off with more ghost sounds? We should. You should we don't really have. The, you should sign off with Mario's death sound if you're trying to trying to do that. <laughs> oh, that's the new Mario. That's what, that, when I'm Mario. That's what the sound is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs>We want to thank all of our wonderful Patreon supporters. Without you, the show would not be possible. And we want to start off with some of our new Patreon supporters, including That Really Wets My Bread. <laughs> it's a good one. It's a good one. Also want to give a, a shout out to Alan G. Jessome. And of course, uh, Lord Cornwallis. And Goon Cahoots. And my old friend, Nick Johnson. And don't forget, Andrew Big Jadson Naked Co-Ed Goose Bumpin' T-Shirt. Welcome new Patreon supporters. Thank you, Andrew. (laughs) And of course, the rest of our wonderful, lovable people. And all of our, yeah, all of our wonderful supporters, including Kale Clinton. That Meowmers guy. (laughs) 
Stefan Jive Turkey Kuwabara. Hollis Hornbeak. Old Fred Atkins. Nathan Dolezal. Good old David Cron. Chris Birch. Dapio. Mickey C. Michael McDowell. Clayton C. Kayla Tharp. Buddy Morrill. Mike Lanteri. Nick Hinkle. Joshua P. Robertson. Cameron Murphy Audio. Daniel Kalejas. Jim Greaves. French Onion Supine. Jared Mason. Martin A. Macias. Zankeef. Natu Pearl Henderson. Joshua Gooflumps Lopez. Oh. <laughs> the Rupal Productions. Jibs. Christopher Boyce. Afshin. Michael Hart's Corn. <laughs> <laughs> Daggy McSankey. Bean Father Spookman. Jennifer Britton. Jonas Blotterman. Stephen Ghost Kisser Daniels. Victor. Bread and Rowden Bush. Aaron T. Strunk. Dango Twist. What a great name. Brian Wells. Chris Culver. The Dragon Llama. You guys ever just think about Zentacles? <laughs> All the time. Mm. Drew Applegate. Heath Robinson. John Keaty. Turtle Manson. Kramer. Michael Knight. Defender of the realm. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, watching you sleep, Dom Cole. <laughs> Sleepy boy, 69. Joe, remember to save early and often, Scott. Becca McWilliams. Stealth Bates. Paul Grasso. Walter Frazier. Joseph Miranda. Taylor Dirks. Slum Lord Onion. Scott Colopy. Robert Moon. Patrick Reynolds. Third Sergio. Jason Crooker. Alistair Perez. Miguel Pardo. Chad Sexy Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know okay. about her. All right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a pretty good dog overall. Vincent Monica. Trent Davis. Christina Doling. Clay Castle. Luke Noodles. Connor Church. Zam Bambino. Calf. Cody Redfield. Matt the Half Court Warlock. Bachelor. <laughs> Randy Hernandez. Trendy Moron. Maddie. Shoon. Ishak Arafin. Matthew Doppelganger Gangbusters. Ryan Melfi. Gabe Chavez. Reinfected. The Puerto Rican Dream. <laughs> Sniggenson Van Pickens. Tyler Penner. Alan Saylor. Kyle Billings. Sam Hash. James Royce. Mikey Jello. Chosen One. Gregory D. Warren. Jin K. Jake Young. Bradford Coulter. Jonas Ingman. Rich Hilborn. Aiden Deace. Dylan Vaughn. Shifty Swamps. Toothless Barry the Whistler Bostowitz. <laughs> Divaldi. Dan Henshaw. Joshua Jacobwitz. Justin Wagman. Ryan Chell. Eric England. Nathan Remick. Matthew Literal. Cry Bricky. Leviathan. Cardboard Walk. Mitch McConnell <laughs> is a sentient pile of trash. <laughs> I concur. Tommy, beautiful, magical breakfast boy hoy. Oh, my favorite. Goblin Library. Eric LeBaron. Rug. Up and Champ. Reed Steubendake. Alicia Graf. Solazo. Anthony Kuwabara. Molicious. Carl Kleinsasser. Senpai Gods. Chewy Evans. Brock Graham. Paul's butt. It's a magfest. Hey, I'm all right with him talking about my butt. It's a magfest thing, baby. Hmm. Yanni Markovina. Hugh Bolin. What, are you suspicious of that, Chad? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know your life. It's a magfest J thing, Chad. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't know. Joe. <laughs> Elusive Koala. Carewise Gamgee. Jessica Zybol. Blake Alvarez. Paul's Christmas Sock, a.k.a. Watch out for that dirty slink, a.k.a. PCS W O F T D S. Thank you for breaking it down. Cameron Hansen. Christian Van Skyver. Swagbot Yolotron 3000. Bone. Brooke X. Boss Skeleton. Jake H. Corey Shelley. Another Joe. <laughs> I added the another. It's just Joe. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Generally depressing. Low belly hate me. Eto no more. <laughs> Jeremy Lowe. Zach Connor. Rocket Raccoon. Rex Ronan, experimental surgeon. Hey, classic continued callback. Yeah. Adam Norton. Anxious serve. Avery Whitney. Yeah, yeah. 
John, the howling eye, still knocks and stares down at you, Chad Duda. Appreciate that paranoia shop reference. Appreciate that. Okay, I didn't know that one. Yeah, Christopher Dunn. Ryan Knight. Or, I'm sorry, Ryan Kite. (laughs) Valhalla Black. Foolish for Deborah. Stuart and Lockwood. Carter Glass. Emma Bid Drinking Blue Icy. Noah August. Boss Garretson. Dan. Chris Pittman. Patreon Donator. Yep. <laughs> Tom Whitman. Dylan E. Ads. Joe Tierney. Lady Story Weaver. Moo the Mage. <laughs> Soup Experimental. Will Holmes. Ryan Stewart. Vladimas. ZB. A pair of Scots. Stephen Edwards. Danger Tits. <laughs> You, you said that like you that came up on the screen and you were like, that's the villain who's been chasing Watch out, out. Danger Tits! Watch out, Danger tits. tits! Some tits can be very dangerous. I'm just, I just gotta say. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Dangerous, yeah. Llama Consultant. Marceline Miller. Nicholas Johnson. Calamity Carl. Goose time. <laughs> Jonas Evan Voldson. And Nathan Whitmore. Can I just say, it's goose time. <laughs> that really wets my bread. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thank you all so very much for your love and support. We love you all. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.